There is no right life in the wrong. Or in German, es gibt kein richtiges Leben im Falschen. This is a well-known quote by Adorno, which is probably familiar to most of you. And we all know what it means, for example, when we are short of time and order books from large um, online companies, even though we know how important it is um, to support the local bookstore in our neighborhood. Or when we can't afford to buy fairly produced products, but have to choose goods which have been produ produced under conditions which we actually morally don't support. As architects, we are confronted with this issue quite often. I'm sure all of you remember from city tours or from documentaries where social or political conditions of a certain time period are um, described on the basis of architecture. This is because architecture is often a reflection and a result of economical and ecological, but also social and historical negotiation processes whereby we as architects have often very little influence on most of these um, factors. At the same time, the impact of our activities is having ever greater consequences for the environment. Almost 40% of global carbon dioxide, it's really not that easy word, um, carbon dioxide emissions are coming from the construction sector. And in global north, there is actually no longer any need for new construction because there is already enough built space um, for all of the population. However, we see the inconsistency with this statement in this recording. In this clip, you don't see the queue in front of a newly opened Apple store or in front of a club, which you might assume in Berlin. This, this queue has formed in front of a viewing appointment for a low-priced three-room apartment. So yes, statistically, there is enough space for all of us, but the fact is that the space is just unequally distributed. This is one of the reasons why we architects are still most involved in the construction of residential space. And when it comes to residential space, the single family home plays a special role. In Austria, as many as 40% of all apartments are in single or in two family houses. However, this form of housing has long been a subject of controversy not only because it promotes urban sprawl and soil sealing, but also because the development of the necessary infrastructure for single-family housing settlements, like roads and sewage systems or the public transport, is very cost and energy intensive compared um, to the same thing in um, urban areas. But the single-family house in itself is also energy-intensive in its production and in its maintenance. This building type can also react very poorly to um, social developments, for example, as the demographic change. It's just not that easy to convert a single-family house to the needs of elderly, for example. And I could also talk much longer about the other implications of single-family homes for gender roles, for example, and, um, and about other socioeconomic consequences. But let's get maybe back to Adorno um, and the initial thesis, which is complex enough. There is no right life in the wrong, Adorno stated. And my question would be, is there really nothing we can do wrong, uh, we can do right, sorry. Um, shortly after founding our office, we still had very few building commissions, which is not that unusual for um, young architects as we were. And during that time, we were also involved in teaching at the Technical University in Munich, where we worked um, on one of our publications. In this publications, 
we were engaged with architecture and the production of space in Bavaria. Bavaria suffer from um, similar consequences and figures as Austria when it comes to soil sealing, urban sprawl and the consequences of wrong building policies. After all of our examination and analysis on this topic, we decided to take a clear position in the book. As a template, we choose the provocative poster by a well-known German graphic designer and modified it with the statement, Bavarian families, see or now wants to take away your Tuscany houses. And while our book was still in print or perhaps even still with the graphic designer, we received a request by email for a building project. And now you can guess what we were asked for. <laughs> exactly, we were asked for the design of a single family house. A young couple from Berlin bought a property 80 kilometers outside of Berlin and asked us to design and build a house out of concrete on a low budget. Beside the fact that they wanted of all architects in Berlin us to build a single family house, um, to build a single family house as we just made this bold statement, we were equally surprised to read that. They asked for a house with 120 to 130 square meters on two floors with lots of lights for maximum cost of 180,000 euro. Yes, this was already five or six years ago, and it was before the inflation, it was before COVID, it was also before the war in the Ukraine. But even at that time, it was such a low budget that we were kind of, it doesn't make sense to start uh, uh, planning at all. On the other hand, for a young office like we were during that time, it was a chance to at least build something. And building things is the job of architects, isn't it? Despite our scruples about the task to design a single family house, we made our clients an offer for a first draft for, for a first draft for a small but fair fee. And to be honest, here again, we also urgently needed the money at that moment. We, with mixed feelings but motivated, we started the design process and our clients started to send us references of projects from Pinterest and similar platforms <laughs> to give us some hints how they imagined their house to be. What we saw... What we saw were nicely made exposed concrete houses with large glass openings, fine detailings and spacious rooms. We got nervous because now it got so clear that we will never manage to correspond to their expectations. For this kind of architecture, you definitely need more than one million euro. And at the same time, we were looking for this kind of building, buildings. <laughs> Industrial, <laughs> industrial prefabricated holes, which should be lower in price than 50,000 euros. Pretty early in the design process, it was quite clear for us if we want the, to provide them any space, we have to resort to ready-made solutions and to simple constructions. But we were also quite sure that we will not be able to build this 120 square meters of living space they asked us for within their budget. So our idea was to use a prefab hall as a kind of a shelter to provide first and foremost protection from the weather. And in this shelter, they can little by little insert and extend the living space they needed according the budget they have. But we also wanted it to be so big that other things like an indoor pool, a sauna or an indoor garden could fit in. And we wanted to provide them at least some space for some luxury, maybe somewhere then in the future. So this was our first model. We calculated that they could afford within their budget a prefab hall with a floor space of 200 square meter. And inside the hall, we planned to integrate boxes with about 70 square meter, which should be the heated living space. 
The advantage of this kind of concept, which is called house-in-house -house concept, is that the construction of the heated boxes um, is way easier as you don't have to do complicated ceilings and you can choose also much um, cheaper materials since the boxes inside are protected um, by the prefab hall. The other advantage is that the hall can serve as a kind of a climate shelter because it provides not only protection from the weather, but also from the heat in summer and from the cold in winter. So you can just um, use way less insulation, and especially kids can have a wonderful large playing area when it rains outside. But also during warmer periods, you can extend your living space on the terraces or in the indoor garden, so that the end, only in winter, you have to reduce your living space to the 70 square meters inside the warm boxes. This kind of concept isn't anything um, we have invented. This is an example from the 80s from France. And the idea to plan a subsequent extension in the future and not to design or build a house from start to finish is also something we learn from projects and architects like Elemental from Chile, where they introduced these kind of strategies for low-cost housing way earlier than us in Europe. We planned in our project the subsequent extension to be um, so easy and simple that our clients can do it on their own in a kind of a self-built process. So they don't have to spend more money on architects, planners or um, construction companies. But also here we had a problem. What we knew so far was that our clients weren't skilled in craftsmanship at all. One of them was working as an accountant in the field of financing and the other one in programming. They hadn't any kind of experience in self-building. And all of this, and as you remember, the expectation of how the house should look like and how big it should be made us really very nervous and very pessimistic before our presentation of our design. We were quite sure that they would never, ever accept our proposal and our design and the whole project. But to our surprise again, they did. We somehow managed, and don't ask me how, to convince them that this is the only way and solution for them. And after a long process of planning and doing the legal work for the building permit, we started finally with the construction. And during this tough process, which we imagined to be way easier, our clients surprised us again. They totally got into craftsmanship, of course. <laughs> they bought all kinds of tools and they even installed this small um, workshop to make this project possible. And this is how the house looks like now from the outside. And another surprise for us was that the project drew a lot of attention. It was published in almost every major German architecture magazine. We were nominated for, for prizes and even won some of them. And above all, our clients are still happy with the project, even though the costs were a bit <laughs> bigger at the end. We ended up with 240,000 for the construction, but... Um, the space inside was, got also bigger, so it was now 95 um, square meters of heated space. And you can now also find our project on Pinterest among all the other projects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let's get maybe back to Adorno again. And we were asking ourselves, how would he comment this project? Would he say, we succeeded to do a right thing? Probably not. And if you ask me, I would say yes and no at the same time. Yes, because we provided our clients a solution for their problem. And no, because our project doesn't solve the general problems with single family houses. And is this project of us anyhow better than all the other projects on Pinterest? Definitely not. But why did it draw then so much attention, we were asking ourselves. And you might also ask yourself, why am I showing this project now to you? 
With this project, we found out that maybe the question how to do things right in this complex world, which is challenged by so many different problems, is maybe not the right question. With this project, or why this project was successful for us, is more because we learned how important it is not to prove things to be right, but instead to prove things to be wrong. And yes, we didn't manage to prove Adorno being wrong. How could we? But we proved our profession to be wrong by showing that it's possible to build, a, to build architecture with certain qualities with, um, on small budget. We proved also our clients to be wrong by making clear that um, concepts about what is best for oneself, you cannot find that easy on the internet. But also our clients proved us to be wrong by being open to our ideas and arguments and also by showing us that people who work their whole life in front of computer are still able to develop skills and craftsmanship. Proving things to be wrong is not, some, is not only something which is relevant for us architects. It's also something which is relevant in all of the professions. Because we as professionals are the one who create the working environment. We are the one who develop theories, technologies and policies. Um, uh, which are which, uh, and we shape the life of so many people. And it's also on us to prove that a lot of things are wrong. Because only by that we can open up a space for new ideas and new solutions. And by that we can also demonstrate that really everything could also be different. Thank you. <laughs>